As we discussed in our long tail video, people's personal technology envelopes are growing increasingly complex with more and more devices that are more and more diverse, increasingly interconnected, increasingly mobile, and increasingly central to our lives. And as we all know, increased complexity is the enemy of convenience. The good news is that the Internet of Services is the antidote to this complexity. To help explain the Internet of Services, we've created a framework, a seven-layer stack, if you will, to help articulate the challenges and solutions of the connected life. At the first layer are the devices themselves, the light bulbs, door locks, and video cameras. The second is the fog network. This is the network within the home that connects with these devices. Third is the connectivity to the cloud, provided by the telecom and cable companies. Fourth is the universal remote control device that's used by the consumer, typically a smartphone or perhaps a tablet. Fifth is the point control application layer. These are the applications that accompany each device. They can control a light bulb or a door lock or a video camera. You'll see that these map to the very same device manufacturers on layer one. The sixth represents the platform providers who aggregate multiple devices and control applications to create a simple unified control system. For example, they can control a light bulb and a door lock and a video camera. Layer seven represents cloud services and SaaS applications. And all of this, of course, is being pushed to market very aggressively by virtually every large retailer. Now at each layer, there is data generated connected, collected, stored, analyzed, and shared. And obviously there are security, trust, and privacy considerations here as well. As we can see, there is a compounding service complexity here, both as we move up this stack and as we add more devices, especially if they're diverse and interconnected. A further complication is that this environment is dynamic, not static. These devices are connected, intelligent, context-aware, and learning. They're receiving continuous updates and upgrades through the internet, and they're doing so in an environment in which other devices are constantly being added, removed, and changed. Our experience indicates that people will be assembling their connected life ecosystem a device at a time from multiple manufacturers. And research projects that the number of devices per household will climb to about 17 within the next few years. This volume overlaid against compounding complexity means that at some point there's a declining marginal utility to the user as they add more and more devices. Meaning the last device added may be unable to deliver the value expected. And if it doesn't, then it's at significant risk of getting returned because this complexity is totally at odds with the core value proposition of the Internet of Things, which is convenience, control, and simplicity. So as long as one believes that everything will work as intended regardless of the environment around it, Every piece of hardware, every piece of software, and every point of interconnection, we're good. But that's not realistic. The fact is that there is a strong immune system here. And for value to be generated, these devices must stay in market. Fortunately, there is an antidote to this, which is a service wrapper that surrounds and supports each of these various elements across all of the devices, the software, and networks involved. That's the Internet of Services.